this is the pre-lab discussion for the experiment electric circuits. The objectives of these experiments are to measure the voltage and current of resistors that are connected in series, parallel, and combination of series and parallel circuits, and to study the relationships of resistance, voltage, and current, and the distribution of voltages and currents in each resistor for the different types of circuits. You must be familiar already with the different symbols in our circuit diagrams. So we have a straight line for the conducting wire or conductors with negligible resistance. We also have here the symbol for our resistor with a capital R and the source of our EMF or our power supply. The longer line is the positive terminal and the shorter line is the negative terminal. A symbol for our voltmeter, a circle with a V at the middle. And the symbol for our ammeter is a circle with an A at the middle. Since this experiment is about circuits, it is important that you know the complete parts of an electric circuit. So an electric circuit has the following parts. We have of course the source of EMF or the voltage source. Of course the conducting wires and our load or um, our resistance or any device that are current consuming. These are the basic types of electric circuits. We have a simple circuit with its complete parts wherein you only have one load. We also have series circuit wherein there are more than one load and for a series circuit, the flow of charges is only in one direction. We also have parallel circuit wherein the flow of charges are in different direction or different path and it can be a combination of a series and parallel circuit. The materials for these experiments are the following. Resistors and we will be using carbon type resistors that are placed in um, boxes and we will be having the 10 ohms, 20 ohms and 30 ohms resistors. We also have the source of EMF or the power supply and the connecting wires. We also have the voltmeter that will be used to measure the potential difference or voltage and the ammeter that will be used to measure the current. How to read the voltmeter? So in this experiment, you will be seeing a voltmeter that has different scales. So we have here 3 volts. 10 volts and 15 volts so the first step is to choose the scale that you will use 3 volts 10 or 15 volts and then once you chose the scale determine the least count in the chosen scale so for example you connected your circuit using the 3 volts scale so that would be 3 volts divided by 30 so 30 because there are 30 lines or 30 divisions in our meter display so that is equivalent to 0.1 volt. So each segment or each division has the least count of 0.1 volt if our circuit is connected to the 3 volts scale. But if we choose the 10 volts scale, that would be 10 volts divided by 50 because there are 50 divisions or 50 lines in our meter display. And that is equivalent to 0.2 volt. So it means 0.2 volt is the least count that our voltmeter can read if we connect our circuit using the 10 volt scale. And if we chose the 15 volt scale, that would be 15 volts divided by 30. 30 because there are 30 divisions or 30 lines in our voltmeter display. So that is equivalent to 0.5 volts. So it means 0.5 volt is the least count that the voltmeter can read if we connect our circuit to the 15 volts scale. So once you know the least count, you can now multiply the least count by the number of segments the pointer made. So example, our pointer has its location here. So, it points at this location. So, we have to multiply 
the least count to the number of segments the pointer made. So, example, the 3 volt scale, the least count is 0 0.1 volt. We have to multiply this by 22. 22 because our pointer points on the 22nd line using the divisions in our 3 volts scale. This is the 22nd line. So, that means our reading is 2.2 volts. But if we choose the 10 volts scale, if we connected our circuit in the 10 volts scale, it would be the least count, which is 0.2 volt times 37. This is 37 because you have to count the number of the segments or divisions, which is for this case, this is the 37th line using the 10 volt scale. So that is 0.2 times 37, it will be 7.4 volts if our circuit is connected at the 10 volt scale. And if your circuit is connected at the 15 volt scale, that would be the least count, which is 0.5 volts times 22. So 22 because the pointer points at the 22nd line or 22nd segment. And therefore, the voltmeter reading would be equal to 11 volts. How to read the ammeter? So for this case, our ammeter has a scale of 500 milliampere. And we have to determine the least count of our ammeter. So that is 500 milliamperes divided by 50. Because there are 50 lines or 50 divisions in our meter display. So that is equivalent to 10 milliampere. Meaning each division or each segment is equivalent to 10 milliampere. So we have to multiply the least count of our ammeter, which is 10 milliampere, by the number of segments the pointer made. So example is, our pointer points at this location. So the reading would be 10 milliamperes, which is the least count, times 33, because the pointer points at the 33rd line. So, our ammeter reading is 330 milliampere, and you have to convert this to ampere, which is equivalent to 0 0.330 ampere. This experiment has three parts. The first part is resistors in series connection, part two, resistors in parallel connection, and part three, resistors in series and parallel connections. So, part 1, resistors in series. So, you will be connecting 3 resistors, R1, R2, and R3, in series connection. And, out of that, you must be able to read the following. So, R1, R2, and R3, you have the 10, 20, and 30 ohms. Out of the experiment, you must be able to read the voltage drop for each Resistors. So, therefore, the voltage drop at resistor 1, 2, and 3, and the voltage drop in the entire resistor or the total voltage. And you will get that from the voltmeter reading. You will also determine the current that will pass through each resistor, and those are current 1, current 2, and current 3. And also, you will determine the current total that will pass through the entire circuit. And all of these readings will be coming from the ammeter. Once you have the data for the total voltage and the total current in our series connection, you can now get the equivalent resistance, experimental value, and the equivalent resistance, analytical value. To get the equivalent resistance, experimental value, that is the total voltage divided by the total current. And the equivalent resistance, analytical value, since this is in series connection, all we have to do is to add R1, R2, and R3. For the percentage error, that is the difference of the analytical and the experimental values divided by the equivalent resistance, using the analytical value times 100. 
part 2 resistors in parallel. So for this case, we will be having three resistors, R1, R2, and R3, that are connected in parallel connections. And again, the value of the three resistors are 10 ohms, 20 ohms, and 30 ohms. Out of the experiment, you must be able to read the voltage drop for each resistor, that is the V1, V2, and V3, and the total voltage drop for the entire circuit, and you will get the data from the voltmeter reading. For the current that will pass through each resistor, those are I1, I2, and I3, and the total current in the circuit, you will get the data from the ammeter reading. For our equivalent resistance, experimental value, you will calculate it using the formula of total voltage divided by total current. And for the equivalent resistance analytical value, since this is in parallel connection, therefore, our formula would be 1 divided by equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And for the percentage error, still, that is the difference of the equivalent resistances divided by the equivalent resistance using the analytical value times 100. Part 3, resistors in series and parallel combination. So for this case, we have here resistor 2 and resistor 3 that are in parallel connections. And the combination of 2 and 3 is in series with R1. So using the same values of resistance as 10, 20, and 30 ohms, you will get the voltage drop out of the voltmeter reading. And the current that will pass through the resistors will be coming from the ammeter reading. For the equivalent resistance, experimental value, that is the total voltage divided by total current. Equivalent resistance analytical value, we have to simplify first R2 and R3 that are parallel to each other. Therefore, 1 over R2, 3 is equal to 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Once you have the combination of R2, 3, you will add that to R1 because they are in series to each other. So, the equivalent resistance analytical value is the sum of R1 plus R2, 3. And for the percentage error, that is, again, the difference of the equivalent resistances divided by the equivalent resistance using the analytical value times 100.